morning student my name is professor g p paul and i am professor of the human anatomy today we will learn about an introductory lecture on to the human anatomy this lecture is meant for newly admitted student in medical colleges first of all i would like to congratulate you and your parents for your admission in medical college in this short lecture i will introduce you with the subject of the human anatomy naturally since you have come to the medical college now this must be a question in your mind that what are the subject to be studied in the first year of medical college in the first year of medical college you will study three major subjects anatomy physiology and biochemistry when we just look on to the subject of anatomy this is the subject which will just tell you how our body is constituted what is the structure of our body different systems of the body for example respiratory cardiovascular nervous system and many other system what are the structure of the muscles nerves vessels and organs so this subject will tell you about the structure of the human body now then there is an another subject in the first mbbs to be studied and it is the physiology subject and in physiology you will learn how these various systems of the body they actually function so anatomy is just only structure while physiology will deal with the functions of the various systems of the body and as such the whole body for example you will learn how ultimately the heart is pumping the blood into the arterial system and how this blood is returning back okay similarly in excretory system you will learn how kidney are functioning okay then the third subject which you will learn is the biochemistry and biochemistry is the subject which will tell you what are the various chemical process which are taking place within the cell okay within an organ now for example you must have learned in your classes lower classes that when glucose burns hmm, in presence of oxygen in individual cell of the body it produces the energy and the carbon dioxide in the similar way there are many reactions which are taking place in body with the help of the hormones or enzymes all these systems which ultimately functions with the body uh, this will be learned in the biochemistry thus the first subject anatomy will deal only with the structure the two subject physiology and biochemistry they will deal how our body functions now these three subject which we, you will learn into the first mbbs uh, your first year of the mbbs course they are anatomy physiology and biochemistry and all these three subjects they are also known as the basic medical sciences now the question will be arising in your mind why should we learn all these three subject now since this anatomy deals with the normal structure and physiology and biochemistry will deal with the functions of the human body that is very important to learn you should learn what is the structure of the human body and what are the functions of the various part of the human body without learning this normal structure and normal function of the human body it will be not possible for you to understand what is the abnormality in the structure okay so to know whether a structure of the body and organ okay or parts of the body is normal or not you have to learn the anatomy similarly for the to know whether the body is functioning properly or not if the body is not functioning properly this will lead to the disease so to understand the function and disease you will have to understand anatomy physiology and biochemistry 
Now, then we now concentrate only on the subject of anatomy. Okay, so just for the time being, we will just deal with the human anatomy subject. Okay, now if we see the definition of human anatomy, then it is the study of the structure of human body, as I have just told you also that anatomy deals with the structure of the human body. How it is made up? What are the constituent part of the body of the human being? But at the same time, in the medical science, human anatomy structures are only not sufficient. You will have to go one step further, which you have not studied in your lower class in anatomy of the animals. This is the relationship among the structure. Thus, there are two components here in medical anatomy. First is the study of the human body structure. And second component is that what is the relationship among these structure. Now, body structure is just not sufficient as I said to learn because you have to learn what are the structure which lies in front of particular organ say for example if you are learning the stomach you will have to know that not only the structure of the stomach its border surfaces its blood supply its nerve supply but you will also have to study what are the other structures of the body which are lying superficial to the stomach what are the other organs or structures which lies behind the stomach okay what are the structures which are lying above what are the structures which are lying below the stomach okay that means how the stomach is surrounded by various other anatomical structures organs blood vessels and the nerve then only the study of the stomach will be completed. This is true for any other organ of the body which you will learn. This will be true for any blood vessels or nerve or muscles which you will learn in the limb. Say for example in upper limb or lower limb you will have to learn hmm, which are the structure anterior to the artery which are the structure which are lying posterior to the artery or on the side so this is the interrelationship among the structure and this is the reason why the anatomy subject become complicated because you have to deal with the interrelationship of all the structure which you will learn now when we define the human anatomy we always say it is the body structure what but the body structure you will notice that is a broad term okay you can learn the body structure in human anatomy just by seeing in the naked eye okay just observing it okay and you will learn the various gross things okay about it border surfaces size shape all other things okay but then the structure means you have to learn the structure of an uh, body organ or any other uh, uh, blood vessels now okay with the help of the microscope okay with the help that means you will have to learn the structure which is not seen by the naked eye and you will have to use hmm, the microscope okay so you will go to the finer aspect of any structure that is also anatomy okay but then beside this you will have to learn the structure of not only at the microscopic level either light microscopic or electron microscopic level which can enhance an image or it can increase the image to 1.5 lakhs time okay so that is also not sufficient you will have to go one further step where you have to learn the structure in some cases hmm, up to the molecular level what is the molecular constituent of a particular structure so it is not only the broad i mean say gross structure of the say for example stomach or any other organ but when you will learn the structure 
or the molecules of DNA that is at the level of the molecule. So right from the structure of human body which you can see by naked eye or which you can not see even by the microscope. For example, the molecule structure you cannot see with the help of any muscle molecule. It has to be seen indirectly. Okay, that is a different subject. So you have now learned that anatomy is nothing but the structure of the human body starting from what you can learn with the naked eye right up to its molecular level. Okay, then it is also the interrelationship among the structure okay coming to the next slide these are the various sub discipline of the human anatomy for example there are four branches of human anatomy which you are supposed to learn in the first year of medical science okay and this is the first is the gross anatomy and this gross anatomy will acquire you are most of the time see for example 60 to 65 percent of the time you will be dealing with the gross anatomy and gross anatomy means the structure which you can see by the naked eye without the help of the microscope so when you will learn this gross anatomy it has three subdivisions okay this is the cadaveric anatomy. The most important will be the cadaver. Cadaver means the dead body. So with the help of the dead body, you will have to dissect the dead body and learn the structures, their relationship, okay, which can be very well seen by the naked eye. But at the same time, you will also learn the living anatomy. The cadaveric anatomy is the anatomy learned by the dead body, but the living anatomy is the anatomy learned by the uh, from a living person. How to study uh, the anatomy in a living person? Because of the invention of various a technique say for example x-ray you can visualize the bone the joints and with the help of the special procedure you can visualize the lumen of the various organs for example git okay with the help of the barium anima or you can inject certain radio opaque dye and this will visualize the lumen of the ureter bladder hmm? like that there are the various procedure which become possible to learn with the help of the x-ray then for the techniques which are used in the learning the living anatomy are the cat scan that is computerized axial tomography then came an another method what is called as mri magnetic resonance imaging sonography then the various kind of the endoscopes which are available will help us to directly learn the anatomy of a living person. Actually, we need to learn the anatomy of a living person only, but since we cannot dissect a living person, that's why we take the help of the dead body, which is the cadaveric anatomy. Then in this gross anatomy, which you can learn with the naked eye, will ultimately come the applied anatomy. And what is applied anatomy or clinical anatomy? This is the branch by which you will learn how to use your knowledge of the anatomy, whatsoever you have learned on your patient, which you will utilize in the second, afterwards the second year of the MBBS course, right? So this is the called as applied anatomy. So these are the three sub-disciplines or the three branches which comes under the gross anatomy. The second sub-discipline is the histology or the microscopic anatomy. As I said that the structure which cannot be seen by the naked eye, they have to be learned by the microscope, either electron or the our light microscope. Okay, that branch is called as histology. So that will be an another branch which you will learn with the help of the microscope. Okay, then the third branch is the developmental anatomy. That means this is the development of a, a fetus or embryo or fetus right from its uh, fertilization. Okay right up to the adulthood is achieved that is the developmental anatomy while embryology is 
that period that is right from fertilization till the newborn is born okay i mean say till the baby is born that period of the whatsoever development takes place is the embryology so that will be an another important branch for you to learn and lastly we will also teach you the genetics which will deal with the laws of inheritance how the particular character is transmitted from one generation to the next generation and what is the structure of the genes and what are the genetic disease which uh, can be uh, i mean to say we can control or which cannot be controlled cannot be treated all those genetic diseases which we will learn in this branch okay so these are the various sub disciplines of human anatomy and we will just take for the uh, first the gross anatomy i will tell you little more in detail about the gross anatomy what is gross anatomy as i have already defined defined it gross anatomy is defined as the study of the structure that can be seen with the naked eye that i have already told you without the help of the microscope and we have seen the three subdivision cadaveric anatomy was one and this was this will be learned with the help of dissection of the dead body okay and this is learned okay with the help of the combination of the lectures and dissection that means your teachers will first take the lectures in lecture theater and then you will go into the dissection hall to dissect the same thing what was taught in the lecture theaters now the various structure of body and their interrelationship can very easily be studied by the def by the dissection method that was our definition of the anatomy which you can see by the naked eye when we go further in this from where do we get the dead bodies for dissection when i am teaching you that you will have to go for the dissection and do the dissection on the dead bodies then the question must be coming in your mind from where do we get the dead bodies for the dissection dead bodies are obtained from two different sources either by donation or unclaimed dead bodies when there is no body to claim a dead person usually the beggars who die by the side of the road police bring this dead body to the medical college for this dissection purpose okay but nowadays most of the dead bodies which we receive in the anatomy for the dissections they are donated bodies and because of that now more and more people have started donating their dead bodies and then the scarcity of dead bodies is little uh, has eased out okay now this dead body when they are received they are preserved very well and all this technique how body is received from where it comes okay how to preserve the body and how to keep it in the tanks for years together that will be taught to you when you will go on the first day in the dissection hall okay your teachers will teach you if your teachers are not teaching you please ask them how the dead bodies are preserved and uh, how they are obtained now this Uh, preservative usually which we use is mostly the formal dehyde solution okay and then you will learn about how to preserve the dead bodies by um, making the injections okay now the dead body is studied in the dissection hall uh, can be achieved by the two different method or as such even the theoretical if you are learning the gross anatomy that has two different method of learning the first method is systemic anatomy that means where your teacher can teach you system after system that means first cardiovascular circular and circulatory system huh? and then they can teach you any other musculoskeletal system they will teach you the nervous system reproductive system respiratory so system after system you can learn the anatomy as you were doing till now in your lower classes when you were learning the anatomy of the animals you were learning by systemic method okay system after system but then this method is not practiced in the medical schools or medical colleges why because if you will go by this method then you will have to dissect so many bodies because once you will dissect 
start dissecting one system that body will get spoiled okay you cannot dissect the other system on the same body that's why there are there is an another method of study of human anatomy which is practiced in most of the medical colleges it is called as regional anatomy that means you study the human body structure from region to region for example when you will go to the dissection hall okay you may probably start your dissection with either upper limb or with the lower limb and when you are dissecting the upper limb and lower limb you will see many systems inside at a time for example when blood vessels artery and veins you will see in the upper limb this constitute the cardio part of the cardiovascular system then you will see various nerve you will see muscles bones joint of the upper limb in that particular region and that is the regional anatomy that way we need only one body to learn the anatomy of complete human body a human in through one single body okay that's why we save body now the systemic anatomy approach though may be easy for one system but it is quite confusing in medical science in medical science though the gray's anatomy and many other books in human anatomy they describe systemic anatomy but you have to use okay the regional anatomy okay in the medical science which is more beneficial okay let us see further uh, aspect of the grass we are still on the grass anatomy where you can see by the naked eyes okay so one part we have completed a that was the cadaveric anatomy the anatomy learned by the dead body okay now we come to the living anatomy as as i have already told you that in living anatomy you learn the anatomy of from a living person and because of the uh, techniques which are available which can look inside the uh, human body okay and these are the called as medical imaging and what does mean medical imaging medical imaging means that you can image the structure of the human body okay without uh, harming it without harming and these are the technique as i have already described x rays ct scan mri sonography and endoscopies most of the departments in india okay they teach you the x-rays after the completion of that region say for example head and neck region so they will show you the x-rays with the various special techniques also uh, of that particular region so region after region you will run the x-ray you will learn the ct scans of that particular region mri okay and some of the departments in india have started teaching also the medical imaging through sonography okay now when we come to the third uh, aspect of the gross anatomy it is clinical anatomy or applied anatomy and this is the knowledge of anatomy when it is used in your clinical practice on your patient that means when you will use the knowledge of anatomy to treat the uh, a patient that is called as the clinical or applied anatomy both living and clinical anatomy will be taught to you along with the cadaveric anatomy um, from part to part okay so whenever there will be a lecture on particular subject which has hmm, something to tell about the disease for example there will be when they will teach you the heart at the same time they will teach you various disease associated with the heart very superficially for example they may tell you the coronary arteries the branches of coronary arteries and at the same time they will also teach you um, what happens when these coronary arteries are blocked okay that means how the heart attack in a layman's term ultimately uh, uh, is uh, ultimately is there okay that thing will be taken they may also tell you while teaching you the heart um, what happens when the heart walls are defective okay defective so this is the applied anatomy okay that is an applied uh, let's come to the next slide and this is now we have completed the portion of the gross anatomy that means anatomy which you can learn with the help of i mean say just by seeing my naked eye okay now 
which is the first book to be studied in anatomy okay that is the important question okay which is and this is called as general anatomy so for the first 10 to 15 days when you will start going to the anatomy department you will be asked to learn the general anatomy okay so what is general anatomy general anatomy is an inter introductory subject which is taught to newly admitted student in every institution so huh? before they start learning the actual uh, anatomy subject or start dissection okay start dissection and this introductory classes on general anatomy will be taught to you uh, some institutions take 8 to 10 lectures some institutions they take 10 to 13 14 lectures even can be taken on to the general anatomy now why this general anatomy is to be learned before you go to the actual study of the human body okay or onto the gross anatomy before you start your dissection it provides the basic concept of the human gross anatomy okay so human gross anatomy or cadaveric anatomy concept can only be learned very well if you learn the general anatomy first okay because it is providing the basic concept of the gross anatomy without understanding the general aspect of the gross anatomy which will be taught in this 10 to 12 lectures in the beginning uh, this a student then will find it otherwise a student will if you will not learn it properly then you will find it difficult to understand the subject of anatomy thus remember that the general anatomy the initial 10 to 12 lectures uh, are very very important you will have to learn by heart whatsoever has been taken into the lecture of this general anatomy and this will be your first book in the general anatomy right so this consists of the first sub discipline of the human anatomy right in the anatomy department that is the major part then there will be a second uh, i mean to say branch of the anatomy is the microscopic anatomy or histology most of the thing i have covered about the microscopy that means a structure which you cannot see by naked eye you have to see it under the microscope may it be a light microscope or electron microscope hmm. So what you will learn in histology, you will learn the structure of cells, different kind of cells. Then you will learn the structure of tissue, okay, and organs with the help of microscope. So that means first you will have to identify cells, then tissues. There are various basic tissues. And once you have learned about the tissues, then they will teach you about the various system where organs are located. Then you will have to understand about the microscopic structure of a particular organ. Now histology is necessary to understand the function that means for physiology. If you will not understand the histology where there you are going up to the level of the cellular details, what are the functions of cell, what they secrete the cells, then you will not be able to learn the physiology. So it is very important to learn the histology before you learn the physiology of the tissue or that of the organ. Then histology is also necessary to diagnose the disease which is can be seen under the microscope. Some of say suppose an organ is defective or there is something wrong in the organ you will order uh, for its biopsy means you will take out a section from that organ a small piece cut it into the slide and then we'll see under the microscope and then you can diagnose to which disease that organ is suffering that means a person is suffering his say for example it is in the stomach itself okay then you can see that the stomach is having this histopathological problem that for that region microscope anatomy is very important okay now as i said that you can study with the light microscope or you can also study with the electron most of the study in anatomy department is through the light microscope but at the same time we also show you the pictures of the structure of an organ which is taken with the help of the electron microscope from this year okay the 
Medical Council of India, according to the new curriculum, the concept based medical education, they have included the electron microscopy uh, to the of various systems of the body. Now histology is taught. As I said that gross anatomy, cadaveric anatomy will be taught with the help of lectures and dissection. In the similar way, the histology will be taught to you by uh, one hour of lecture every week and two hours of the practical class till the histology is not over okay then we come to developmental anatomy okay our third branch will be the embryology it will deals with the development of an individual i told you from conception to adult form that is up to the uh, you become adult okay and that is called as developmental anatomy and this is expanding right from fertilization to the adulthood is achieved because the anatomy keeps on changing in childhood okay and until and unless you become adult your anatomy is changing that is the reason why the developmental anatomy has to be studied right from the fertilization till the adulthood but in medical science okay in anatomy itself we will not go further except few aspect of the developmental anatomy we will teach you only the embryology and embryology is right from conception till birth of the baby okay so whatsoever systems are developing how the trilaminar germ disc is formed how ultimately each germ disc gives rise to the various system of the body huh? these all will be taught to you in embryology now the big question comes why a medical student should learn the embryology okay because what it is has to do with the patients huh? now embryology is very important because of two reasons number one you must have seen many peoples which may show the defect in the formation of the body say for example you must have seen on the face people with the cleft lip there is cutting in the lip is there okay that is called as the cleft lip you must have seen the patients which are having the hard palate that means above the tongue there is a structure called as hard palate it is also defective okay then you must have seen the persons with extra finger or lace finger or abnormal hand short hand or absence of one particular organ right so these are right from the birth that means they are called as congenital anomalies and these structures hmm, are due to something has gone wrong during the formation of that organ that means within the womb of the mother when this organ was forming say her face was forming then this defect must have occurred that is the uh, uh, cleft lip or cleft palate must have occurred and then at the same time you must have to learn that why this defect has occurred that is the utility of the embryology so when a person or a patient is brought to you which is having congenital anomalies you should be able to diagnose it as oh diagnose means you will should be able to find out that that particular defect is embryological in origin okay or some other cause is there and then once it is decided at embryological of origin then you should also tell to the parents okay of the child that this must have occurred because of this region okay because of this region and if that uh, defect okay can be treated or not okay or not okay some of the surgical procedure now can treat the morphological or structural defect but those which are genetic defect cannot be treated okay that we will learn in genetics okay now second aspect of learning of an embryology is because when you learn the embryology then only you understand completely the gross anatomy which you will learn in the section hall okay unless and until you will not learn the embryology you cannot learn many of the structure of the human body because you are learning it right from the beginning how these structures are formed which are present in my cadaver okay in my dead body to whom i am dissecting for this i will give you an two example okay suppose there are two engineer which are car engineers one has knowledge to assemble a car part by part okay and another engineer he can only repair the car 
if it is some part of it is defective some mechanism is defective now tell me which engineer will have better knowledge hmm, of the car the first one who has assembled the car and ultimately have constructed the whole car right from the beginning or the one who has the knowledge to repair it definitely it will be the first engineer who has the knowledge of construction of it okay and this is exactly applies to the human anatomy okay when you know how the body parts were developed then you will learn the anatomy also in a better way okay you can correlate it in a better way so this was the third branch which you will learn and this is the last branch the genetics and you must have already learned a lot about the genetics in lower classes and here you we will use those aspect of genetics which are associated with the disease the medical genetics only we will learn we will not learn many other things which you have learned we will learn about the chromosomes we will learn about ultimately how the defects uh, occur okay chromosomal anomalies and the defect due to the mutations in the gene we will learn and what are the disease which are associated with the human genetics okay and whether you can treat that disease or not okay that will be taught to you in the genetics with the help of almost uh, 8 to 10 lectures and embryology there will be one lecture per week okay and mostly in the practical you will be shown the models of those embryological uh, specimens right so ultimately we come to the summary of what we learned today okay we learned that the human anatomy has four sub disciplines that is gross anatomy where you learn the anatomy by your eyes hmm? microscopic anatomy where you will learn the structure of human body with the help of the microscope and embryology where you learn how the various systems of body are formed okay and genetics okay the molecular genetics and chromosome chromosome can be seen by light microscope but genes cannot be seen okay genes cannot be seen with any method you have to just uh, depend on indirect method so this completes the first lecture on to the which was uh, just an introductory lecture to the subject of human anatomy now in the next 10 to 12 lectures i